Okay, so today we're going to be looking at some hands that I played in a recent session of 10 and L. I've had about 500 hands and I was planning to make it a slightly different video style um, where I full screened the tables that had the current action on. Um, but doing that and having to do that for the first time led for it to be a little bit less fluent than I would have liked. And uh, I think I probably played not as well over the course of the session because of it. Um, so while I practice doing that, I've decided to change this up and make a hand review again. I'll play the live section of, of me playing these three hands and uh, then I'll review them afterwards. Um, I'm really looking forward to what everyone thinks about these three hands. I think they're really, really interesting spots and I think there's a potential that I misplayed them as well. So without further ado, let's jump in to the first hand, which is pocket aces. And aces on the top right, which we will also three bet. Bring up both tables so everyone can see. You get a cold call from the small blind, which is very interesting with the aces. Um, and 10 10 deuce. He's going to have like some 10x, I guess, but not enough for me to, to worry too much. He could certainly have like pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket jacks. And obviously, pocket tens is going to be in his range pre, but then severely narrowed down once we see this flop. Um, this board on the top right, I think I can go ahead and see bet. Um, pocket nines is a consideration here on the on the right, but I'm certainly going to go ahead and and bet. And I think I'll size for for the river. Still going to get stuff like pocket jacks to pay me. If he does have nines, then we're going to lose all our money. He calls again and there is a seven and I don't see any reason not to stick to our plan. Um, he's going to have, oh, we got a fold by the way with the queen jack. Um, he's going to have still pocket jacks I think. I I'm not in love with this spot. I think this is very close but I do think I want to jam. Don't get a snap call which is fantastic news. And he does call with pocket eights which I think is very very loose. Uh, I think this that river spot is actually very very close. So in our first hand, as you've seen, we have aces on the button. Um, the cutoff opens to 2.5 and we three bet to eight, which is very normal. Uh, the small buy then cold calls. Um, and we've talked a lot about cold calls on this channel before, but I don't like them. Um, they're very difficult to balance. Uh, you're going to be capped quite a lot. Um, obviously, this guy may have an idea of how to balance that, but more often than not, the, the people of these stakes are not going to be able to do that. Um, so we see 10-10 deuce. Um, uh, one factor that I don't mention at the time is that um, it's not now not possible for him to have ace 10 suited. Obviously, that's a hand that you're probably going to want to four bet in his position. Um, but, you know, since he's calling from the small blind somewhat often, uh, he may well have that. And in this situation, he can't have that. King 10 and like queen 10 um, are going to be pretty optimistic. So he could have stuff like jack 10 suited or 10 9 suited, um, but uh, obviously not ace 10 suited. So that's a, a good consideration. Um, and obviously then he's going to have stuff like, you know, maybe sixes through nines and, and obviously the, the last two tens he can have, um, and pocket jacks, probably not pocket queens. He's going to want to four bet those. Um, I think jacks is reasonable. I don't think he's going to four bet every frequency. Um, and if he's calling a lot from the small blind, then that might be something he has. So we're going to start with a bet, which we do. Um, obviously we're going to have jacks plus, um, you know, We'll maybe check back some some ace king, uh, but we can certainly bet with like ace king of hearts and, and spades and, and stuff. Um, we could even consider just betting betting everything here. And if I'm betting a small sizing, then I, I might well do that. Um, so we do bet, and our opponent calls, and he obviously still has everything in his range. I don't think you're going to want to check raise this board much um, as small blind here. The nine is not the best card because obviously now he's you know going to improve to it. A full house with with pocket nines um you know 10 nine was already winning but that's also something he can he can probably have um like i said it's hard to pinpoint someone's small blind calling range and um, but we know like it looks a lot like what we've said uh so uh, he checks again and obviously he still has stuff like sixes maybe through through eights and then and then potentially pocket jacks so i do think we should bet again um which i decide to do uh and I think this is absolutely fine. I don't really want to check back here. Um, definitely different value to be had from those hands that we're talking about. And he decides to call again. Now, this river spot I think is incredibly interesting. And I said at the time that 
I don't think there's any reason for me to not continue betting here on the river and, and just jamming as planned. But the seven is somewhat interesting because we're talking about him having sixes through, you know, on the flop, sixes through nines and then, and then jacks potentially, right? So when the seven comes, uh, and obviously he's going to be slow playing, you know, some, is, is jack 10, um, two combos of jack 10 suited that he might have. And he doesn't have ace 10 suited, which is definitely, definitely important on this river. Um, so I think that betting here is going to be a very close decision whether between between bet and check now the reason is uh, obviously our hand is is very good and um, but against call call he's going to have you know probably not sixes on the turn he's probably going to fold that um but sixes and, and sevens and eights potentially and then maybe pocket jacks that we beat pretty much everything else obviously because he's not going to have queens or kings um you know we lose to 10x you know everything else is way too optimistic so you know, Queen Jack, obviously, if he, if he had like Queen Jack of Hearts that he floated, then, you know, he may call the turn and then he's obviously going to fold this river anyway. So what do we actually get called by when we jam? Pocket eights and then pocket jacks that he didn't fall bet. So I actually think that this is potentially a check back rather than a jam. Um, and I'm very interested to see what people think. I know the usual suspects in the comments will, will give me um, what they think about this and I'm really looking forward to seeing that but I actually think that this is potentially a check back based on opponent's range he's not going to do a lot of check raising with jack 10 I don't think he should anyway because he's going to have a lot of those hands like sixes through nines that, that want to hang on and he's going to protect those 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 hands with with his 10x that he might have not having a not having a 10 suited is is important but um probably we're now looking at a very very narrow range of hands obviously eights and jacks are more likely than the nines and sevens because of the nine and the seven being on the board so i think this is this is a close spot and i think that at least at some frequency we might need to check back here as a result but as a you know as played we do jam and our opponent calls the pocket eights so um even though we get the good result i still think that this is close and i really really want to hear what people think but that's the first hand so let's move on to the second um opening up ace king in the top right and getting three bet and we will go for the four bet being deep i think we can tack on an extra tax here can sometimes call here i think um but i think i prefer to three bet and um, we'll three bet to 25 sorry four bet and we'll four bet to 25. don't know anything about this opponent we have no stats on him on this occasion um flop is obviously very good he can have pocket tens but so can we he leads which is so interesting like, I guess he can have, like, king, queen of hearts. Um, shouldn't have pocket fives. Can certainly have pocket tens. Shouldn't have pocket aces doing this for sure. Uh, so, we are going to start with... Um, a, we could start with a call. We could just raise. I think calling is probably just about preferable. And on this turn, we are going to go broke if he jams. If he has pocket tens, that's fine. He shouldn't have pocket nines, obviously. And I think we have a pretty clear jam ourselves now. We want to deny equity. I don't really think we want to bet small here. I guess we could bet small, but I think I'd rather just go all in. You can have like ace queen. That the board could get tougher for. We can have a lot of bluffs here. So I do think that I want to that I want to do this. That seems like a very reasonable turn. Uh, sorry, river card. Um, but I think we played our hand just fine. So in our second hand, we have ace-king off-suit on the button, and we elect to open to 2.8, our opponent three bets. Uh, now, you can maybe mix in the call sometimes, but I think we're just going to go ahead and four bet. Obviously, the opponent's three betting range is going to be, you know, somewhat tighter from the small blind, but obviously ace-king is doing fine in general. Uh, so we do elect a four bet, and we choose a slightly bigger size because we are deeper. I might usually make this, like, closer to two times his raise, maybe something like 23, but... Just a couple of extra big blinds just to, to put a bit more pressure on. Obviously, he's going to be getting a good price. So, um, And our four betting range, obviously, we're going to have a lot of ace-king, um, a lot of strong pairs, like, um, you know, sometimes 10, sometimes jacks, and then queens plus always. Um, and then, you know, ace-king, ace-king suited. Maybe some bluffed uh, ace-5 ace suited, and then um, that's pretty much it. Maybe a bluffed king-jack on, on a very odd occasion. Uh, and then, you know... 
we can probably want to pure call with like king queen of hearts which is going to be like a consideration that we that we look at later and stuff like king queen of diamonds so um i know i don't do a lot of four betting with those hands because they play so well in position i don't want to get you know five bet jammed off my equity so when we do see five ten a's uh, and I do mention at some point in this hand that I have a lot of bluffs and I'm I'm not convinced that's true in hindsight. So we're going to have a look at that now. Um, now our opponent calls the four bet. Now, obviously, um, he shouldn't have fives. Tens is something he's always going to have. Um, and then, you know, he's going to have some ace-king, ace-queen, uh, ace-jack suited stuff. Uh, he's also going to have the last combo of ace-ten suited. Uh, so we shouldn't think too much about the ace-ten, of, obviously, of clubs is the only ace-ten he's going to have. Uh, because we block a set of spades and when he leads um i think he can definitely have um stuff like being this deep stuff like queen jack of, of hearts and king queen of hearts that he wants to maybe lead and then obviously ace jack and ace queen of hearts and pocket tens i think would probably check raise unblocking the ace so I, I don't like this lead at all i think it's very hard hard spot to balance i don't donk anything so um I think, yeah, I'd much prefer to see him check. Um, but if he's going to bet, then I'm expecting to see those kind of hands. And if ace-10 is very unlikely, pocket fives is going to happen. And we have, you know, the best ace, and he's really not going to have pocket aces all that often. He's certainly going to want to do this with... Well, he's certainly not going to want to do this with aces, I don't think. So pocket tens, and then, you know, ace-jack, ace-queen of hearts. Um, maybe king-queen of... Well, queen-jack of diamonds, because obviously we bought king-queen of diamonds. So... That's pretty much it that's going to want to do this. There's not really any other hands I think this makes a lot of sense to do with. Obviously, he's not going to do it with like jacks or queens or anything. So that's pretty much what we're dealing with. And then obviously we have uh, pocket tens on occasion and then always have pocket aces and then have ace king as well. Um, so, you know, we, we could consider raising here without a heart. Um, but I think that calling is, uh, is totally fine. I think that if we had aces and we probably wouldn't want to raise. So... Um, especially not with the ace of hearts so i think that uh, i'd prefer to call with everything here that i'm going to continue with the knight of diamonds is somewhat interesting uh, obviously like queen jack of diamonds that he could have potentially done this with as a bluff uh, is now gonna probably jam um king queen of hearts is in, a, is in an interesting spot um and then he's gonna have obviously that the ace ten of clubs and, and pocket tens and then ace jack of hearts and ace queen of hearts i think that's pretty much like you know opponent's range and maybe ace nine of hearts on a very you know low frequency i guess because he might probably fold that to the four bet but being deeper who knows and i don't know anything about him so he, he may well he may well have done obviously we now lose to that so that's a consideration and when he checks i don't think he would do that with you know tens or ace 10 or um ace nine of hearts um because if he is going to be bluffing with king queen of hearts queen jack of hearts or queen jack of diamonds then he's going to want to balance that he's going to want to jam this turn and he's going to want to balance that out with his stronger hands so um i think that after he checks he's more likely going to have like the ace queen ace jack type of hands not necessarily and maybe ace king not necessarily with hearts as well um so i think that um with ace queen and ace jack he's going to be in a tougher spot on the turn rather than if we check back and, and let him see like a, a river i think he has a tougher spot on this turn and i said that we have some bluffs here but i'm not convinced that we do if we don't bluff um if we don't uh four bet with like, like king queen of hearts or king queen of diamonds then we're not going to have a lot of bluffs here um so it is hard for us to be bluffing at the same time uh i do think that we want to obviously not give free cards to those drawing hands that he could potentially have although i do think that a lot of them are going to jam turn um, and then obviously i think that our opponent mainly the reason i probably prefer betting here is our opponent's going to have tougher spots on the turn with ace jack and ace queen than he would with than he would on the on the river um where he might be able to fold slightly easier depending on run out like the run out obviously might not be you know favorable for us it might be like a, a broadway card that either Im improves his hand or obviously gives me a better hand and he might have a tougher time paying off the river on certain cards maybe like hearts and diamonds as well um depending on what kind of ace queen he might have so when he checks uh i think jamming is reasonable we talked about maybe betting small but i think i'd rather jam or check um but again this top this spot is just really really interesting um and i'd, I'd like to hear what obviously people think uh, we jam and our opponent has a, a and i'm an easy call uh, well he has to call but he doesn't love it um and then we get rivered which is fine um but i think our play in general against his range is going to be 
especially like when he when he bets flop and then checks turn. I don't think he's going to have any of those any of those bluffs. And I think they're all going to want to barrel turn, um, unless he's a super scared kind of player. Um, and then he's just going to jam pocket tens and ace ten. So I don't think he like it, it makes sense for him to slow down with like an ace queen ace jack type hand. So I think, like I said, for the reasons that I explained, I, I prefer to jam this turn, but certainly open for discussion. And then obviously we we don't run well, uh, but that is the game that we have chosen to play. So we'll move on to the last hand and we'll see if we can run any better. So we've got aces here in the big blind and first under the gun raise, we're going to obviously three bet. Opponent seems, he's 17, 16, 18, over 68 hands, which is... Not too many hands, but certainly an interesting, interesting set of stats. Uh, Jack nine, five. Uh, he's going to have some, you know, queen ten of clubs, like king queen of clubs, and all that kind of thing. So we definitely want to be betting against those. And I think slightly larger is better, especially when we're deeper. So I'm going to choose a larger size with everything, but it means I'm not going to be betting all of my range here. Does mean I get to size for turns and rivers on size on, on favorable runouts. Uh, he does raise me, and without a club, uh, I think we're probably going to go ahead and three bet, as he's going to have obviously all those club draws that we're talking about. So we are going to go ahead and do that. And just looking at the sizing, this seems fine. Yep. Uh, so yeah, he's in a real tough spot with obviously his club stuff that might want to have to get it in. If he has a set, then he's going to take all my money. Um, and we, we shall move on. And obviously we have to call. And yeah, like I said, the club's pretty standard. And yeah, we do lose again, which is unfortunate. Um, but I don't think there's anything I probably could have done there. But we'll obviously talk about that. So our last hand is pocket aces, um, we're in the big blind, and under the gun, who, you know, we don't have many hands on, but, you know, this is, like I say, a little bit interesting, his stats, but I don't think I want to spend too much time on that. He's a bit deeper as well. Now, I was talking about earlier in the intro that I was trying to work out these, like, scene transitions, and I was making a few misplays. This is definitely one of them right here. This should be bigger. Um, something like 10 or 11, this being a little bit deeper is certainly better i think eight puts nowhere near enough pressure on but it does mean we have to make some extra considerations post flop um our opponent's going to call which he's going to do like really often when we give him those odds and we see five nine jack now we're going to have pocket jacks um but not pocket nines i don't think and uh, not pocket fives we do have queens plus obviously and then like ace king of, uh, of clubs ace ten of clubs king queen of clubs stuff like that um, like I said, I'm going to size up and not bet my whole range here and just you choose those hands that I've just said to bet with because our opponent's going to have uh, probably all the sets. I can't see why, why he would do anything different with any of those hands. Um, and then he's going to have like maybe even some Jack-9 suited, um, you know, some some strong some strong Jacks, um, some like club combos, like maybe 6-7 of clubs, 8-7 of clubs, Queen Jack... Uh, Queen 10 of clubs, King Queen of clubs, and all those uh, Broadway club combos I don't think he'd do anything differently with, apart from Ace King of clubs he might 4-bet. So our opponent's doing really well, which is why we don't want to bet everything, and if we do bet, we don't want to bet slightly bigger. Uh, and so we do, and our opponent decides to raise, um, which he's going to do with you know that range that we've just described. Um, he certainly has a lot of flush combos, considering that we... Um, misclicked no not misclicked but misplayed pre-flop with our with our sizing so you can have obviously ace deuce of ace deuce of clubs ace three of clubs ace four of clubs ace seven of clubs ace eight of clubs you know king queen of clubs it's a lot of club combos basically there's not really many you can even rule out so i think that when he raises here whilst he can have jack nine and sets um obviously without the ace of clubs this becomes for me a clear three bet um, because those hands are going to get put into tough spots and he's going to have all of those probably uh, knowing that he's doing very well on this board with sets and a couple of two pairs so uh, i like to especially out of position and without a club i prefer to three bet and make it a sizing so that i can jam the turn on some safe runouts so obviously if i see a club then you know obviously it's gonna be a very tough spot but it's certainly not a card i'm going to want to jam but pretty much everything that bricks is going to be a jam for me and i'm sizing an amount to make it like my river jam 
be, be fairly sizable and impactful to him on the turn. Um, and then obviously he's probably going to play maybe his whole range is just getting it in on the flop. Like all of his club combos that have straight draws, pretty much all of them have straight draws as well, or they're very strong, like ace high flush draws. So he's never really going to mind getting it in here with his raising range on the flop. Um, but obviously we know that we're doing just fine given that how many club combos he's going to have. So I think that this is my preferred way of playing this hand always and our opponent does jam. Like like always, I, I'd like to see what people think, but I think this is good. Uh, he jams and we have a, obviously a very clear call, not loving it and expecting obviously to see lots of sets and flush draws. Uh, and on this occasion, he does have a flush draw and we, we lose again. So, um, you know, this was obviously these two hands were quite big as well. These weren't these weren't pretty hands, and I ran four binds below EV in this session. But uh, much more interesting to talk about the actual the actual spots themselves. Um, and I think that I would say that the two that I lost, I'm okay with, and the one that I won, I like less. <laughs> so I'm interested to see what yeah, obviously people think about that. Um, but the live plan explained series is coming soon, uh, probably in the new year, along with some increase in production quality and some other new stuff that I'm hoping everyone's going to really enjoy. But for the now, thank you so much for everyone contributing to the channel, liking and all the subscribers I'm getting. I'm really enjoying making videos for you guys and, and everyone interacting with me on emails. You can email me. All my links will be in the description below if you're interested in coaching or just having a chat then yeah, do give, do fire me an email. But uh, for now, thanks very much uh, for watching. I will see you guys probably closer to the new year um, with it being a busy time for me around Christmas. Um, but we'll see you very soon. Thank you very much.